Hey folks, man, this is Monk. We're back with another from the Canopy Film Show. And I'm joined as always with my co-host. We got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, and we're here to talk about film by way of news, trailers, and reviews, man. And um today I don't have a lot of news. All I got is um the fact that Jason Momoa has joined the cast of Fast and Furious 10. And this was announced last week. Um <laughs> There's not really much to say except that I think he's joining the cast. We don't know what kind of role he's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say this. After hearing this news, it makes me think that The Rock was serious when he put out that statement saying that he wasn't going to come. You know, so I think um, unless they playing us a long game and are just playing us all, you know, doing an ultimate publicity stunt, but but... But for them to pick up Momoa, that means that maybe The Rock backed out and they need someone big. No one's bigger than The Rock, but you can get a bunch of smaller guys and hopefully, you know, boost your up, your profile to try to fill that and, role. And if you're going to go Momoa, might as well just, you know, cut off the middleman and just get Bautista. Yeah, but I think right now Bautista, you know what? He does have Drax on his belt. Momoa is Aquaman, though. I don't know, dude. It's just hard to um, it's hard to call it. <laughs> I'm not I'm not hating on Momoa yeah, or nothing. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying, you know, like mm -hmm. I, I think uh, Bautista got a little more range. Mm -hmm. So depending on the role, he does. But this is Fast and Furious Ten. Does it really need range? Just <laughs> 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 not. Does he really need range? Uh, yeah, but I point don't, proven. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm excited still. I, I, I do want to see how they, you know, wrap this whole thing around, bring it, bring it full circle. But like I said, that doesn't rule out the fact that they could still be long gaming us because this film is probably set to be the biggest one ever. If, if people know that it's the final one, I think the turnout and the excitement can be great though. Like, like it's you know, like it's you know, because this franchise is still a cash cow, bro. It, it is. You know, I don't have to like it. it I'm not the biggest fan of the franchise, you know, but it, it makes money. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely makes money. It's definitely a cash cow. Um, but that's all I got for news, man. What you got for these uh hey, man, well, you know, sometimes when I check the mailbox, you know, <laughs> I, I hope that there, there's nothing in there. So sometimes no news is good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. So, um all right, so um as far as trailers go, the first one I have is a film called Toll Booth, and um it's gonna drop for us on March 18th, 2022. Mm -hmm. And it's a dark comedy thriller from Wales about a lone toll booth operator with a past that is catching up with him at a rapid rate. And at the same time, we have a local traffic cop that's investigating a simple robbery that finds herself heading to the same toll booth at the exact wrong time. This one looks real entertaining. It's one of those like Euro films where you're just yeah. gonna you, they're running out of characters with past i mean i think one of the movies we're going to talk about later is a dude with the past but now a toll booth operator is like that's where we going now <laughs> i mean the only the only thing that, that made me kind of oh. laugh is like this toll booth like like why why is it even there like when you look at the surrounding it's nothing but grasslands hills and is it a border like or? no it's just in the middle of fucking nowhere oh, it's just in the middle <laughs> of nowhere, dude. Like, and he's just sitting in there, it, 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 nothing but but grass and and greenery and everything around him. It, it it doesn't even look like I don't even think it has a like one of those toll gates. It's just mm -hmm. he's just there. Yeah, it, that's weird. That's I don't funny. know, but it looks, <laughs> it looks fun. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. what I got from the trailer. Yeah, I mean you can make a good movie about this. I'm just making fun of the setting because you know, like I said, a guy with the past. That's just a yeah, you know, classic it's, movie it's... movie uh trope. You know, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, so the next one we got going is a, a film called The Cursed. It's going to drop for us on February 18th, 2022, and. This one um, is set in rural 19th century France mm -hmm. and a mysterious, possibly supernatural menace threatens a small village and a pathologist has to come to the town to investigate the danger and exercise some of his own demons in the process. Okay. 
the synopsis doesn't do justice <laughs> to the trailer. It just sounds real basic, but from what I saw from the trailer, it looks really, uh, you know, really cool for all intents and purposes. And it's, it's, you know, I like the fact that it's set back, you know, way back when, um, cause you, there's a lot more leeway when it comes to, to films of this nature because of the lack of technology and the simple way of living and things of that nature. And it, it looks like it's like some Salem witch trial kind of no, it, it kind of gives me like vampire vibes or some kind of a, I don't want to say it's not, it's definitely not werewolf, but, um, there's some, uh, there's some entities going on, but I don't think it's just, you know, significant to one, one bracket. Like it's, it's not just witches or vampires or, you know, some kind of, a you know, disgruntled ghost or something like that. I think they got a little bit of everything going on in this little pocket town in France. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know. Curse Lane and Yeah, I don't know what they're doing down there, but, you know, whatever it was, it wasn't right. But I did appreciate the fact it shows this dude, he, you know, once he starts to, uh, I guess, vamp out or wolf out or whatever it is he's doing, he got the, the straight, like, he got the grills going. All the way across, you know what I'm saying? Front and front and by or top and bottom, there's grills everywhere. So I don't know who had the where for all to, to print out some or the, to make some platinum grills, mm -hmm. you know, for the, <laughs> for the wolf man, but <laughs> in, in the 19th century, but they did it. So more power to them. Um, the next one that I have is a film called After Yang, and it's going to drop for us on March 4th, 2022. And this one, it, I'm I'm a little stoked for this one just because you know it, it seems like it's really going to pull on the heartstrings. Um, as far as the synopsis goes, it says in the near future, a family reckons with the questions of love, connection, and loss after their artificial intelligence helper unexpectedly breaks down. Um, but as you watch the trailer, you see that um. Yang is he, he he looks like a, a a teenage young man and um through some of the other you know uh reviews or synopsises that I've read on this film uh they say that he was bought by the family to be a companion to their younger daughter mm -hmm. and then as he starts to break down they start well they discontinued him they can't fix him uh, the model the parts he's like... got some kind of like <laughs> i guess like a like a bug like they say spyware they start mm. saying some kind of spyware and it's virus yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's like once it, it's like one in a million chance that your your mm. robot mm. will will end up with these problems but he does and the fact that he was bought for their younger sim you know for their their yeah. young child like young a friend or family yeah. and family member passing away slowly and pretty much and then so colin farrell is is trying to you know go through great lengths to try to get him fixed but it's starting to seem like that that might not be mm -hmm. um as easy done as 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 he thought if it's possible if it's even possible you know and so through, through through all that going on maybe they you know reconnect as a family realizing that they don't really need you know him but it's like kind of losing the family members same as you know people with pets man you know the family dog and shit, that's part of the family you know what i mean so mm -hmm. um and you, you get that kind of you know feeling from from this trailer I, i'm definitely all the way looking forward for this one because it just it seems relevant with the times that we live in and it, it, shit i think what was it just last week we dropped another artificial intelligence mm -hmm. movie you know what i'm saying yeah i mean we're getting this error like sci-fi is such a dope genre because you can go the action route but then there's also really dope philosophical stuff to explore with that as well i mean yeah, you're right think about that movie um we talked about marshall ali's movie it's kind of along these lines as well as the um the one with um 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 finch finch oh yeah same finch. kind of you know dealing yeah. with similar subject matter so and that's and cool man we live in a technical world so you know this is definitely starting to hit on keynotes you know 
mm-hmm. um, as we progress in the, the the technical world that we're living in. Uh, these these might be things that we're exposed to in the future. So there's that with that. And then the last one that I'm going to bring up is a Shutter uh, Shutter film, and it's called They Live in the Gray. Um, it has a release date of 2022 and i didn't i could not find an exact date but i know it's going to be dropping on shutter for us and uh it's pretty much based on um, a young woman that's investigating a child abuse case and she uh yeah obviously yeah she's a social worker that discovers the the family is being tormented by a supernatural entity and in order to save the parents from losing the cust- the custody of their child, she must stop the ma- malevolent force. Yeah, you know, this is my favorite genre. Yeah, I know. I know, I know how much you love these. So, for me personally, like <laughs> so now this the new twist: is the ghost gonna make you lose your kids, <laughs> right? Uh, I I, I want to say what what was that that there was one film was uh, oh, wow. case case thirty nine or something like that. Uh, Renee Zellweger oh, film. Be that one. It, was, it was a while back, but this it it, 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 it looks like it's going to follow that same that same kind of uh, stylistic mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> all in all, it, you know, it looks it looks interesting enough. I'm definitely going to check it out because why not? It's on Shutter, and mm-hmm. you know that's uh, that's available uh, uh, to me. So hey, man, you know, it's the worst that can happen. You know what I mean? <laughs> what it's gonna suck? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm chomping at the bit for some good horror film, so you know this, this, this. You know, it's entertaining enough. Oh, real quick before I uh, lose my train of thought, we did get a teaser for uh, the new Pinocchio. Oh yeah, I forgot that. I didn't even watch that teaser. I think I added it. To mm-hmm. the thing without watching it, just sometimes I don't really have to, I see stuff and I don't really have the time to look further in it. But I'll I put it on. I think it is on our trailer list. It is. It is. So it yeah. is. And yeah. uh, it, just I a mean, reminder: it, if you're looking for the things that you know trailers we're talking about, we have a playlist on the YouTube channel um, of the of the film show where you could go there and and see any of these trailers that we're talking about. And there's always extra trailers too because mm-hmm. I I find a lot throughout the course of the week. Just some of them just might not really hit chords with me so i don't want to bring them up but they're always available on the on the website mm-hmm. and um yeah so we um netflix is gonna drop pinocchio for us and we we get to see the little teaser the cool yeah. thing about this is it's a it's a stop motion animated musical fantasy film but it's directed by guillermo, guillermo del toro mm-hmm. and that's what pulls me in like mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't really care what else it has to offer the fact that he's Mm-hmm. You know, got his hands in this fully. I'm yeah. I'm already on board. Yeah, it makes me curious as well. Um, well, let's get to these reviews, man. Um, I just want to take a second to point out that my Warriors hoodie is from Coney Island directly. Nice, nice. <laughs> you know, it, has, it has a ripped pocket, but I'll fix that one day. But I still think it's cool. Um, <laughs> so honestly, I got one film this week, and I think it was a good one. Um, and how good that's going to depend on what kind of film make film watch you are. If you're like me and Bob, you're probably going to think it's good. And I'm going to explain this thing. So this film is called clean. Um, it first premiered in 2021 at a film festival, but the official release is January 28th for the United States. It's actually playing in some theaters around here. Really? Um, I wish I got it to the theater to see it, but I bought it straight on view voodoo after watching the trailer. And I didn't even care. I just went blindly and, and, you know, the reviews were pretty decent that I saw on it. And it looked like something that I would be interested in. And I also like Adrian Brody mm-hmm. in these kind of, you know, hardened criminal roles. It's, it's crazy. It seems like it wouldn't be believable because Adrian Brody, but he's very convincing in this kind of work. But the film is about a tormented rubbish man named Clean who tries to live a quiet life of redemption. But when his good intentions make him the target of a local crime boss, he must soon reconcile with the violence of his past. The star Adrian Brody is clean. It's also got Richie Merritt, AKA White Boy Rick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chandler Ari DuPont. I haven't seen her in anything. Uh, we also get Glenn Fleshler, 
who plays uh white boy rick's dad he's the main gangster guy we also get rizzo as a pawn shop owner and um another notable um mckelty williamson aka bubble shrimp mm -hmm. company Bubba shrimp, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um it's a solid cast not really much bigger than that everyone else is you know they side um characters and such but i thought this thing was pretty good for what it was man it's a crime genre film it's the um the guy with a past <laughs> kind of film who gets somehow pulled into his um evil ways man but it's pretty well done man like it it's entertaining enough i mean if you want to be um a dick and just pick this thing apart you probably could but for what it does i thought it had a lot of heart and the story the plot's not very you know it's nothing we haven't seen before but i thought it's told with a lot of care and like this thing is low budget but they stretched it to the max um the performances for the most part were pretty good and by the end i was satisfied with it dude like it, it just it's one of those things it's like i don't think this thing will show up on any awards list or break any walls but for like a saturday afternoon or late night throwing it on you you know you're gonna you'll be all right you're gonna have a you know good time with it and have some time to reflect you know what's presented to you absolutely and then like not for nothing like Brody, what he brought to the table, you know, like his acting and mm -hmm. his his portrayal of the character, it was it was very convincing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like he didn't he didn't pull no punches. And one thing that I really liked <laughs> is that like you get this like Brody doing his like Batman Dark Knight narrative voice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That was, I mean, but it translated well, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, you know, for me personally, like something that really stood out was the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they set this, this, this yeah. area up. Like it feels like more than just like a bad neighborhood or yeah, it feels like the depression is around yes. this, this the country and even this area, even, you know, it feels like a really like, 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 I guess the best, room, like, it feel like it would be like, um, it's modern because they have cell phones, but mm -hmm. it feels like, you know, late eighties Detroit, you know, after the automobile started drying up, like, like, like where, yeah. where the bad stuff happened, where, where, um, um, uh, Robocop, where, where he got shot up at. Yeah. Like, it feels like that kind of area where, you know, where, where Murphy got, got, got gunned yeah. down at like and, one of them type of areas. And they cover their bases with like, a multitude of bad elements mm -hmm. like it's not just you know like hoods or or, or people committing crime you got the mob element mm -hmm. you got you know um a, a various various different yeah the, the cricket police vibes. yeah and speaking of the police, atmosphere yeah. like the music so yes, i didn't find yes. out i didn't find out till later adrian brody does the film score in this yeah and like because that, that, that clip that i sent you he <laughs> said he'd been working on music for years mm -hmm. and this just presented an opportunity for him to try and i think he does a good job like some of the some of the music sounds a little hip-hop-ish some of it sounds jazzy the, 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 the it, there's some shit sounds like orchestra like like this thing like i'm surprised man and it adds a lot to the atmosphere it man. really does i looked into that as well and yeah it said um like as i was looking through the you know the the, the mm -hmm. score and stuff it, it was like yeah produced by brody beats mm -hmm. brody beats you know yo, <laughs> so, he might oh, yo was, somebody y'all need some beats man, yeah, hey, man. Up, my man. And then, <laughs> not for nothing i love the song the intro song that they played mm -hmm. that is pain music at its finest yeah. i was trying to like search it up. i couldn't find it's it him. i was looking just now before you got here on spotify to see if they put out like a soundtrack or a score yeah i'm, I'm looking for that yeah man <laughs> I, I, i'm with that, that yo man the intro song my man my girl is singing her heart out yeah. it, it, it's very very heartfelt it's just pain music at its finest man yeah. and I also I do want to put out um this film is directed by Paul Soleil and I looked up and Paul Soleil actually directed Bullethead which is another mm. Brody starring for the same kind of character well different but but still that like that criminal crime guy yeah. and, and, and like the same thing he did in American Heist, but American Heist, yeah. But but it, but it makes sense now. Um, Bullethead, like for them to be the same director, so there's a working relationship. Bullethead, if you haven't seen it, see that thing, man. It's a great, oh, it's, it's great. a great film. Bro. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, 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 it'll take you, it'll yeah. take you down some avenues you yeah, might not but, expect. But, yeah, I mean, if, if I want to really nitpick this film, I'll probably you know maybe if I'm gonna have to stick a rating on it, maybe. 3.25 to 3, 3 and a half, but, but I enjoyed it for what it brought to me. I didn't feel bored. 
the, the, the characters were rich enough that the atmosphere the setting yeah. like this thing I'm, I'm, it, it's stuck in my head you know sometimes i see stuff like this and it's in one ear and right out the other but there's certain things that i've seen in this movie that are going to stick with me for a long time and maybe keep me going back to it you know it, 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 it had enough of a heartbeat and a pulse mm -hmm. that you know everything that that was happening throughout the film it, it it had you know you felt it a little bit like you know what i'm saying like like brody's anguish and his his you know his search for redemption that mm -hmm. he's looking for you know throughout this film we 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 mm -hmm. we can sense yeah. that as a viewer and then also yeah, but without showing us everything there are some flashbacks but without giving us all the detail the other things like you you see that he's going to support meetings yeah and 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 you know in in those things so you it, it's like his torment is there yeah oh, you know yeah. what i'm saying it's there without beating you in the head you with can it. tell he's a broken soul mm -hmm. and another person <laughs> <laughs> who stood out to me not for nothing was Glenn Flesher like as our like I guess he would be like the big bad mm -hmm. in this film um I like what we got from him even though at, at times he was a little, a little over the top a little, a little, little over, over yeah. far-fetched yeah. you know like he was the kind of guy where like he didn't respect you enough to stop eating his food when he wants to yell at you and he's spitting his food out and stuff <laughs> that's real real extra with it yeah. but I feel, it, I feel like worked. he did that and sometimes you let the actors go off the hinge and then you trim trim it down the parts i feel like they might have kept a little bit too much but you could tell he was leaning in and trying things and having fun with the role mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like and this is also this is also one of those situations where like someone in that position might actually have that lack of respect for whomever they're you know talking to or conducting their their conversations with like he did a really good job at just giving us the image that he felt like he was better than or above a lot of mm -hmm. yeah you know yeah, the situations yeah. that were transpiring mm -hmm. and uh man he um like not for nothing i mean and this is a this is a it's a it's a it's a it's a far comparison but there were times throughout this film where he kind of gave me the feeling of like when Vinny d was giving See, us lex 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 Luthor well in in the daredevil well, theories well not lex Luthor. you're talking about um Colton fisk um on daredevil um that's who the, not, he said lex Luthor or lex Luthor. <laughs> I, th I thought <laughs> when, when he uh he was he was, he was, lex, when he he was lex? nah he was um kingpin kingpin that's who yeah. it is um, but, yeah. but, but that's who i thought of too except the fact that vinnie d's a, a better actor so oh, it looks like he was channeling him trying yeah. to get to those points but a little bit lacking the skill to, to get there but right. i appreciate it man because like he definitely set the tone man you need that bad guy that the, the, the antagonist to set everything in motion and he did he, he did what he had to do dude That's right. all the no, way to the end dude like Lex Luger is fucking Superman yeah but it's a solid film I would definitely tell you to check it out if, it, if you can't get to the theater near you because it's playing in select theaters but um it is on digital rental that's how I got it I bought it yeah. on Voodoo so you can rent it or you can um you know watch it there but yeah, man, uh, I definitely enjoyed it too. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna search for uh, physical media of it. I would definitely watch it again. Mm -hmm. And I'll... yeah, man, that's what's up, dude. So yeah, the 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 film that I have is um, it's it was brought to us by Netflix. It's Home Team, and this is the one that it it's pretty much loosely based on the the Sean Payton situation uh it was the coach of the the saints um surrounding oh, the, yeah, the yeah. bounty gate situation so pretty much shortly after he uh sean payton and wins the the super bowl with the new orleans saints um he gets involved or is it a true story uh it's it's loosely based on oh, true, right. yeah right. it says based on a uh, true story mm -hmm. but i mean there you know yeah, yeah, take yeah, that yeah. with a grain of so, salt. It's like a but, comedy, right? No, it's definitely a yeah, comedy. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, so it's kind of weird sometimes that you'll get a comedy based on true right, events. Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, but it uh, it, it follows the story about New Orleans Saints head coach uh, Sean Payton coaching his son's sixth grade football team 
when Peyton was suspended for the entire two or 2012 season as a result of his role in the Saints Bounty Gate scandal. Mm. So this is after all, you know, penalties are imposed and stuff. He goes back to his hometown, wants to reconnect with his son. And um, on that endeavor, decides to start coach coaching the coaching the, the, the son's uh, football team. This film, I mean, all in all, it's in the same likeness of like, Little Giants or Mighty Ducks, Sandlot, you know. Little Giants and all them joints, his name hit hard. They all hit hard. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. It's in the same likeness, not as good as, but A for effort. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, this is one of those ones where, you know, you take it for face value. You, you get, you know, everything that, you know, you need to know during the trailers. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you, you, you know, it's going to. It's going to be, you know, lighthearted. It's going to be family fun. It's going to be campy, you know. And then when you get Kevin James in there, like, he brings a certain kind of comedy to his films. Like, mm -hmm. he plays very similar roles in almost every film that I've seen him in. Yeah, so, he's not acting, dog. He's, he's, he's playing Kevin, giving you Kevin James. He's, he's just giving you, yeah. <laughs> and, and he does that as well in this. You know what I mean? Um, it was cool because, you know, you also get um, a... a pretty solid supporting cast you get um uh taylor uh taylor luther or uh, lunther who was my daughter pointed out to me was the the young man who played lava boy and shark boy and lava girl i would not know him if I so <laughs> that's yeah that's another i think i saw that uh, first young in film Oh, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to pull that one out, but that's what she told me. And uh, Rob Schneider, you get uh, Gary Valentine, Lavelle Crawford, uh, Jackie Sandler, and then, um, you know, a, a, a long list of the young child actors who all did their thing. They all did a great job. This one is definitely, you can tell it's a, it's kevin james's film because he you know it's the focal point is always on him mm -hmm. but it was um it was good for what it was you know what i mean like i said it's 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 fun for the family it's mm -hmm. it's not one that i would oh it's a dude from um uh twilight wolf boy yeah yeah <laughs> apparently yeah there you go <laughs> but, um, but yeah so um i mean all all in all it it it, it 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 gives us you know the 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 underdog story and you know a lot of comedic value and everything um like i said there's just there are a lot of other films that fall under the same genre of you know fun family sport films that were done and executed in just such a better way that resonate with me a lot more than this film mm -hmm. But after all was said and done, I wasn't disappointed that I saw it. And I didn't really expect much from it. That's the thing. Like, the only reason why I really clicked on it and and why I was tuned in was because it was based around the actual events that took place with Sean Payton in mm -hmm. his life. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think it's one that people need to run out and go see. But, hey, man, if you got a Friday night, you want to spend some time with the kids... If you got them, mm -hmm. it, this, this would be a good one to put on. All right, that's what's up. Well, anything else? Ah, that's it. All right, shoot. This is a, a slim hey. week this week. Um, I think we do have some stuff opening this week, I hope. <laughs> I hope, you know, so definitely want to get back in the theater, man, and see something. Um, but, but we'll see what's up, man. As well as, man, look for some bonus stuff. Uh, I just re-uploaded old episode i did cover some black history month films um i know we're going to be leaning into that as well on the um um classics of cinematic show so just be on the lookout man you never know how we're going to be coming but we coming this has been monk <laughs> catch me at monkey blood on twitter instagram follow the podcast at from canopy on twitter at from the canopy on instagram you can email us from the canopy pod at gmail.com this is Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me on Instagram at Bobby Blockbuster 118. Yeah. Peace. <laughs>